This is the difference between anatomic and alveolar dead space. Both of these two components make up your total physiologic dead space that does not participate in gas exchange. The total physiologic dead space has a volume of about 100 to 150 cc's, which is approximately one third of your total tidal volume in an upright, spontaneously breathing adult. Your anatomic dead space to start are the conducting airways from your mouth to the nose, not pictured all the way down through the trachea down to the terminating bronchioles as shown in this picture. You can increase your anatomic dead space by neck extension, by face mask ventilation, by having long tubing between your tracheal tube and your Y piece in an intubated patient. And whenever you have a lot of apparatuses or a lot of devices in an intubated patient, it's called apparatus dead space. You can decrease your anatomic dead space by neck flexion, tracheostomy, or tracheal intubation, since the tube is smaller than your whole mouth and neck airways. Next is the alveolar dead space in contrast to the anatomic dead space. The alveolar dead space is your volume of gas in your ventilated alveoli with little or no perfusion. This results from a VQ mismatch. You can increase your alveolar dead space by decreasing overall pulmonary blood flow. This is a little confusing, but if you have an increase in your alveolar dead space by decreasing overall pulmonary blood flow, it makes sense. Uh, things that decrease your overall pulmonary blood flow include reduced cardiac output, hemorrhage, hypovolemia, and myocardial infarction. You can also increase your alveolar dead space by increasing pulmonary vascular resistance, like in ARDS and COPD. You can also increase your alveolar dead space by pulmonary blood flow obstruction, like pulmonary artery ligation, pulmonary embolism, and embolisms, like air and amniotic fluid embolisms. Lastly, just to differentiate, atelectasis is a shunt where you have perfusion but not ventilation, so it's not exactly dead space. Uh, changes in your anatomic dead space can affect the conducting airways, and changing in your alveolar dead space relate to perfusion issues.